he rigs it back and better than ever. Four trucks. New drivers. The same epic racing. Welcome to the 2017 GT Tyres Australian Super Truck Championship. It all looks like status quo with reigning champion Stephen Zammett starting on pole position for the first race of the year. But contact with Shannon Smith at Turn 3 knocked Zammett right to the back of the pack. Smith led the field ahead of the Max Superliners of Barry Butwell and Marcus Prillwitz, while Robbie Fern had a bit of trouble at the fish hook. Butwell was on a charge off-season developments have transformed the Red Max Superliner into a Red Hot Contender. The two Isuzu light trucks of Mark Schultz and Craig Yardy were battling for class honours, with 2014 Series champ Frank Amoroso joining the action. Back up the front, Butwell was applying the blowtorch to Smith in the battle for first place. The two leaders continued exchanging fastest lap times and built a buffer over third place Prillwitz. Finally, Butwell pressured Smith into a mistake at turn 10 and was through to the lead. track and pace to burn, Butwell powered clear. In the end, Butwell took victory by almost 11 seconds ahead of Smith, with Zammett recovering from his first lap mishap to finish third. Marcus Prillwitz finished fourth, while Mark Schultz led home the light truck brigade in fifth. After the race, we caught up with the winner, Barry Butwell. We had a bit of problems yesterday with the truck, but the truck's going well now. And we're happy with the, of course, happy with the first win for the year. That's great. That's a good start. It's where we want to be. We need, um, we actually need a, a bit more top end power out of the truck. It's still down a bit on top end power to be able to 
keep winning because at the moment Zamet would have the power over us definitely. He had a bit of bad luck at the start of the race which allowed us to win but um, we'll keep improving through the season and we'll get there. Shannon's going pretty good, he's starting to learn how, you know, he's a newcomer to the race and he's starting to learn how to drive, he's coming along pretty good, you know, he's a bit of a, he can be a bit of a problem, but, um, and, uh, apart from Zamet, there's really, I suppose, that it, it really is between myself and Zamet at the moment, but Shannon could be a bit of a worry and depending on the track, on the conditions of the track and how the start goes, 31, our other track is also a bit of a, you know, that gets along pretty good, it's, pretty reasonably matched with Shannon's truck, so there's still a few there. It's, it's, it's very spectacular to watch, as you would see. You know, it's good to watch live. It's much better if you're here live. It's good to watch the action. And probably about 25 years ago, I got involved in it. The first time I've seen it, I go, well, no, this is what I want to do. So got involved in it and then had a break for a while and just come back to it the last few years and having a lot of fun. That's what it's about. A typical super truck weekend includes races where teams can elect to run a second driver. These team races are often just as hotly contested as the main show. The second team race of the weekend was on from the get-go. Mark Short's leading from pole position, while back in the pack, things got a little agricultural. Turn 10, but while the Isuzu drops back, Shannon Smith and Frank Amoroso join the lead pack. Veteran racer Amoroso had good pace and overtook both Smith and Philwitz on the main straight. Spin. Up the front, Philwitz put his head down and started to fill the gap. Another spin, this time at turn two. Trillwitz opened up a margin, but Smith was attacking Amoroso the second. 
in the end, it was Krilwitz who took the win, with Smith out-dragging Amoroso to the finish line. Stephen Zammett is one of the most successful drivers in truck racing, and we asked him for his thoughts on the weekend. The truck's going really strong. We've put a set of these new GT tyres on, but the truck is um, handling absolutely fantastic. E every competitor can pull one out of the bag, so um, look, our truck's pretty strong. When we go to Winton, the truck is really quick at Winton, I know it is. Wakefield here is, it is quite hard on the truck, it, it, um, it's got a lot of braking. So look, every truck's got its treat, you know. We'll get to Winton and some of the SBRs will be just as quick as us because it's not a real horsepower circuit. So um, yeah, look, the competitors, look, the competitors are all coming up through their ranks. They're, they're all learning. There's a lot of new competitors here uh, with the SBRs and stuff. A lot of young guys, only a couple of 16, 17 year old kids racing them pretty much. They're still kids. So that's where I was when I started. So it's good to, to see the young blood coming through. But you know, everyone's a competitor, mate. That's the way truck racing is. If you're in a truck and you're, you're not in mine, we're going to go hammer and tongs no matter what size, what make, what breed of truck you are, we just go for it. So, yeah, no, it's a, definitely a fantastic sport to, to get involved in. All the regular drivers were back in their trucks for race two, and Barry Butwell led away from pole position, while Stephen Zammett wasted no time in overtaking Shannon Smith the second. From further back on the grid, Frank Amoroso made a strong start to move up to four. Butwell put his head down and worked hard to establish a gap over his competition, but Zammet wasn't going to let him get away. Butwell had a speed advantage though, setting the fastest racing lap of the weekend at a 1 minute 17.6. Eventually, Amoroso was through, leaving Zammett to fend off the challenges of Smith. Battle for fifth place intensified as Robbie Fern tried to find space for his Volvo to get past Craig Yardy's Isuzu. Out in front though, there was to be no one in the way of Barry Butwell, who claimed his second race win of the weekend. Amoroso held out Zammett and Smith for second, 
while Marcus Prilwitz fell to eighth. After the race, Marcus told us about the tricks of setting up a race truck. Well, today we probably, if the weather stays the way it is, we'll probably stiffen the suspension in the back of the trucks. Uh, whereas yesterday we were running around like crazy at the last minute trying to soften them so that they don't um, slide so easily in the corner. It's the concentration it takes to get one around in the wet, it's ridiculous. Yeah, where it's, you know, you can really have a go in the dry, in the wet, you're just telling yourself to back off all the time. The first lap is always action, right, guaranteed. Uh, after that, it's, it's anyone's guess, right? But when, 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 when a fast truck's trying to pass a slow truck, he doesn't usually do it very nicely. <laughs> and I can tell you, I know from experience, I'm driving probably not the fastest truck, so I really have to battle for position the entire race. Yeah. Look, it's no different than you probably going, or a bunch of blokes, a bunch of mates, going to, um, to a go-kart track, no one, got, no one takes it easy. You, you want to beat, you know, it could be your closest mate, but on the track you still want to beat him, or, you know. So, and that's, that's how it is. I mean, Barry and I, uh, Barry will tell you it was me. I'd say we uh, hit each other yesterday, but Barry will tell you I hit him. That's not uncommon. Yeah. The finishing positions from race two were reversed to set the grid for race three, and Robbie Fern got the jump from pole position, while Stephen Zammett made a cracking start, gaining several positions by turn two. Trillwitz grabs the lead, while Fern tried to hold out Zammett, the reigning champion was soon up to second. Bill Witt was enjoying some clear track, but it all went wrong for Shannon Smith at turn 10. Zammoth started hunting down Frillwitz, while Amoroso and Butwell squabbled over third. Zammett had a big look at turn 10, but Frillwitz wasn't going to give in. Two leaders ran side by side for several corners as Prillwitz defended the lead with all his might. Hence dice up the front allowed Amoroso and Butwell to close in and soon it was a four-way contest for the top spot as Butwell passed Amoroso for third. Oh, Barry, 
Finally, Zamet grabbed his chance and passed Krilwitz on the main straight, but well and Amoroso following him through. Then it was Butwell's turn to challenge for P1 as he tried to move around the outside of the fish hook. It didn't pay off though and instead allowed Amoroso to capture second. The position swapped again at turn 10, but well moving from third to first. But he was slow on the exit and Amoroso blasted past, only to run wide at turn 2, allowing Butwell to reclaim first position. Lex Butwell's duke it out with Samus in the fight to win. Amoroso had a big smoky spin at turn 10 while trying to pass Frillwitz. After a drama packed race, Butwell took another win ahead of Samus and the recovering Smith. Frank Amoroso has been around truck racing for almost three decades and has talked to us about being back on the track in 2017. Well, I've been doing it for know, 28 years or something rather, so it's just like pulling on an old pair of jeans. I just step back into it and I think it's not much different to uh, what we normally do. I enjoy it pretty well, so there's probably four good trucks are in, uh, in contention in the big trucks and then we've got a few of the smaller trucks that are pretty good between themselves as well. So. That's just like, you know, back I suppose in 2014 when I won the championship. It's uh, the end of the day, all the luck's got to fall your way and uh, you've just got to keep working hard at it and see what happens. Because it's also a mindset of knowing what your competitors are going to do too and how someone's going to react, otherwise you can end up in a pretty good mingle at different times as well. In pit lane we are, we're, we're all the best of mates, but once we pull those helmets on, the horns come out and it's, uh, 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 take no prisoners once we get out of the track. The final 10 lap Super Pre featured a full reverse grid from qualifying and it was Robbie Byrne who took the early lead ahead of the charging Butwell who was aiming for a clean sweep. Yet again, Shannon Smith was in trouble at turn 10 after a hit from Marcus Krilwitz. Zamet capitalised on the altercation to move up to third. Butwell made a spectacular move around the outside of third for the lead. Zamet and Amoroso also working their way past the Volvo.
Zamet wanted to spoil Buckwell's perfect weekend and applied the blowtorch to the Max Superliner. made a brilliant move around the outside of the fish hook to take the lead, and Rosso moving up to second. Craig Yardy and Robbie Fern resumed their battle, and Shannon Smith was trying to make up for lost time. Fern went off at turn 10 while under pressure from Smith. Zamet pulled clear, but Butwell and Amoroso were staging a fight to the death over second. Fern retired with mechanical problems after five laps, leaving Prilwitz in fifth ahead of Yardy and Smith. Amoroso and Butwell closed back in on Zamet, setting up a three-way showdown for victory. Butwell saw his chance and squeezed up the inside of Amoroso at turn 10. But the pass didn't stick and only allowed Zamet to pull away. The number one Kenworth had established a decisive buffer, but the battle for second was not resolved yet. Shannon Smith had fought his way past Yardy and Krilwitz and was up to four. A great recovery drive. Butwell went for it again at turn 10, forcing his way into second place. And while Zamet won the race, Butwell had done enough to clinch the round win. Yeah, it's a great result for us. We are really happy with it. It's where we wanted to be. It's what we, where we intend to stay for the rest of the year. So it's looking good so far, which is great. Yeah, we've got a few, a few more um, bits and pieces to do to the engine just to get a bit more top end speed, which is not really that critical of Winton, but we just got to get it done so we're ready for when we come back here. We've worked with uh, Russell from uh, motorsports tyres and GT to develop those tyres and they've, they've done a great job of making a, a good controlled tyre for us and the sponsorship that they're giving us as well is just absolutely fantastic, can't thank them enough. We should have a, a, at least another truck, so there should be 11, 11 trucks there and on a small track like that 
11 trucks gets pretty messy and it's exciting. If they've never seen trucks before, um, they're not tin toys. You know, these guys aren't scared to push through because they know nothing's going to really happen. You know what I mean? It's just a matter of pushing through. The excitement of this sport is something that you actually have to be here. You can see it on all sorts of media, but once you're actually on the track and once you're actually here watching it, it's like, you're kidding me. The tightness of the track brings the two classes together. Um, a, cu a couple of years ago, we actually had a situation where um, a super truck and a light truck was biting for the championship. So just by just because there's a, a super a, a Isuzu on the track, it doesn't mean it's going to be, oh yeah, they're just a second class thing. They're not. These tracks here, and actually Winton as well, narrow tracks, fast tracks, slow corners, the Isuzu's have just as much chance of winning a championship than these bigger trucks, so it makes it exciting for everybody. That's the, uh, it's the, the surprise of how quick these things go and, um, and the carnage that can happen just like that. It's a um, yeah, very exciting sport and it's one of those things that every, everyone thinks that it's a, a, a dead sport. Once Oran Park shut down, everyone thought it was all over, mate, but um, yeah, mate, I'd advise anyone to come out and have a look. Uh, look, at the end of the day, it's a fantastic sport. I mean, look, there's a lot of rubbing. The things are big. It's it's a fantastic sport, and it's very family orientated. If you look, all of us have got our kids here that have grown up with us. The drivers are very approachable. The kids can come into the pits and have a look around, and oh, I think it's a lovely thing. Uh, you definitely got to come out here, mate. It's um, it's a they're one of a kind. The trucks are purposely built for the track. They're not just a highway hauler, so they're quite quick. They do. 13 and a half seconds or low 13s on the quarter mile, so if you put that in perspective to anyone that likes drag racing, you know, you've got six ton doing 13s, it's a pretty pretty fast horsepower of sport and yeah, they, they go around corners, they stop, they do everything that a, probably a V8 supercar would do, but on a really big scale. Hope you've enjoyed round one of GT Tyres Australian Super Truck Championship. I'm Lachlan Mansell, see you at Winton for round two.